that was why I really would love to have people join in. Let's have more of these conversations. I don't have the answers. I don't know what the stories are behind there. If there are people who have experiences with all of these things, please kindly come and share uh, your experiences so that we all we all are learning. So uh, in terms of one of the things he said, he said, oh, they shut down this market because the people, the people in the markets were not cleaning the markets, were not keeping the markets clean. And I really found that... Uh, uh, a bit funny. I found that, how are you saying that the people are not keeping the market clean? Is it the business of the people, if the traders to keep the market clean, or is it the business of government to keep the market clean? You're, that's why people are supposed to pay taxes. You're supposed to pay taxes. For example, I have a shop. I'm a shop owner in the market. I've, I've owned shops. I've owned uh, shops before in the market. We pay dues. You, there are certain fees that you pay to the market authority that are always handled by, by government. I don't know whether Lagos State is different. You know, that's where local government and all of that come in. And when you pay this thing, you don't expect me because I'm a shop owner that I'm going to start going to where people have put their debts. I'm going to be the one to ensure they are being clean. No, I pay tax. I pay dues. I paid some levy. Those are the monies that are supposed to be used by government to make those things need. The only thing that as a trader, you will either find me for, or is if if probably I go and carry debt, I throw it in certain places they are not supposed to be thrown at. Yes, then you find the person or in front of my shop. I don't I don't sweep my shop, which I definitely have to do. Because most times when we come to market, you that immediate in front of your shop, your warehouse, whatever it is, you, you normally would keep it clean, you will sweep it, you have people who will sweep it. But the generality of the market, the roads in the market, the gutters in the market, uh, the where they actually put refuse in the market, it's 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 it shouldn't be my concern as a trader to, to do that. It, it shouldn't be my responsibility as a trader to do that. That's the responsibility of the state. So I really found that uh, very funny. I really found that, you know, a bit odd that government was not saying that, uh, oh, it is the people who are in the market that should keep it clean, that they've not keep it clean. That's why you're closing down the market for, for five, one week, for 10 days. There was even a particular place. I know, you know, when I was listening, I took notes because in everything, that uh, that you do, you have to you have to learn, you have to open your mind, you have to listen to everybody. Uh, you don't make up your mind on on issue. I don't do that, so I try to listen to everybody and just look. Okay, what are the issues of ground? And the uh, the commissioner said that even that uh, my twelve that I don't know where my twelve is. I'm sure people, those of you that live in Lagos, you or, or are familiar with Lagos, you will know where that is. They said my my twelve have perishable goods. That, that it was shut down because people were trying to say Alaba market was shut down, that it was because of certain, uh, uh, for political reasons or ethnic reasons and all of that. So he was he now mentioned some other markets. And for me, I, my two, you know, really stood out for me because he was explaining that my two was perishable goods and that they closed it down. I'm like, you closed down people's perishable goods and their businesses will spoil. You understand? Government is supposed to be empathetic. Government is supposed to be, governance is supposed to be with empathy. How do you now do that? You close down people's shop, perishable goods. So somebody will come now, maybe they just ordered goods and you know the way it is, business people, you're always buying things. You always, put, sometimes you even borrow money. Sometimes all those things are on credit. I'm a business woman. Most of our business, we do it on credit. For me personally, I make sure that my money is not in my business. Why should I be using my money for business? I use other people's money, OPM. Either I'm buying it on credit or I'm taking a bank guarantee from banks and stuff like stuff like that. I'm using it to buy my own money. I pull it out. I put it in real estate. So, you know, and then it's, it's a profit. As a profit gather, I take the money out and put it, put it in real estate. Business, they say, makes you rich. Real estate makes you well. well but this is me digressing a little bit, but I love financial literacy. I think maybe one of these days I'm going to I'm going to do uh, that a bit in this live with Aisha. I do financial literacy. I teach financial literacy, which is you know how do you how do you make your money work for you? How do you get financial? How do you get financial independence? Financial independence is when your passive income can take care of your expenses. Passive income are income that you no longer have to work for for you to be able to uh to to pay your bills so for example if you build house 
and you have tenants and they are paying rent, that rent is passive income. If, for example, you buy dividends and you're getting, uh, you buy shares, I mean, and you're getting dividends from those shares, that's passive income. So that's kind of money where you don't have to work. You've already invested and they are, this money are bringing in returns. That's passive income. And, you know, active income on the other hand is money that you have to work for. For example, when you when you when you're working and they are paying you salary that's active income when you're doing business and you are earning profit that's also active income although a lot of people mistake a uh, profit in businesses for like passive income no it's not passive income the moment you are working you that you are working and the person who is doing business and getting money you are all on the same thing you're doing active income if that business goes down or you are or you are sacked from your employment you will no longer have that active income right but if, for example, you have, you have a business, you're running a business, or you're working, you're getting salary, you're able to save, you use that money to buy land, and then that land, you, you build on it, uh, you, build, you build on it, the land on its own, over time, if it, it can appreciate, which is capital gain, you, you sell it, you can sell it for a lot of money, or you build on it, you have it, you put in your tenants, and then the money you're getting, that's cash flow, that's passive income. So that's what, when you have enough of that, that can take care of expenses, then you have you are financially independent. So financially independent doesn't necessarily mean how much you have in your account. You might have, you might not even have much money in your account, but you're financially independent because you have a source of income that is coming in that you don't have to work on that take care of your expenses.